running into the arena, but the athletes are about to be introduced. Miho Nanaka, as you said, an Olympian and uh, no stranger to the biggest of stages. Yeah, I just saw her in the hotel actually before she headed to ISO. A huge smile on her face. She seemed very surprised. I did say to her that as soon as she pulled on, it looked like she was going to do something special on that wall. She's coming off the back of a really disappointing result in Boulder. She wanted to be in the finals, let alone, she missed the semi finals, so let alone not missing the finals. Um, but yeah, she wasn't happy with that, so to be here in this lead final, it means a lot to her, and it also means that she's done enough now to be in the lead and boulder event that we've got coming next week. That is awesome news. Yeah, those results will be confirmed at the end of this competition. 20 athletes go through to the boulder and lead semi-final and then progressing into the final for those Olympic tickets. Mia Crampel, Jessie Piltz, and a very experienced women's final. No first timers in here. No, that's a great point. We've got a really experienced final here. Yeah, no, no new faces, but there's also some younger athletes, some older athletes, and everyone's kind of trying not to glance up at the route there. They're, they're, fighting, the, they're fighting the temptation. <laughs> Laura Roger runs onto the stage. Big jacket to keep her warm, and it is a bit colder here in the stadium, but now the audience are in. Things are starting to heat up, so expect temperatures to rise a little bit. Laura with a big smile on her face. Huge smile, she's really happy to be there. She posted on social that she's incredibly excited to be climbing in this final, as are all the athletes. Yeah, Molly looking really proud right now, as she should be. <laughs> she is indeed, and you said she's come off a nasty ankle injury uh, last summer, and it's good to have her back climbing at this level again. Having the comp of her life as well. Yeah, she made this Boulder semi-final, made the lead final, so she is on fire. And Brooke Rabatou, she was climbing last night and great to have her on the stage. She's joined by Yanni Garmbrecht, who took that gold medal last night. And and then our final athlete out is Ai Mori. She enters through that arch. A bit of a smile on her face. And uh, she will be the last climber climbing here this evening. Um, it was going to be important for them to move around, which we did see. Um, on this route, I don't think there's any secret. I think it's m a very sustained kind of no big surprises. We don't see anything too dramatic, but I think we will see a lot of fight. It's going to be a route where they can get stuck in, really having to grit and bear their way through all of the moves. It's a long route, it seems. The women's semi-final was quite wild, quite different, quite interesting to watch because it was so strange in many ways. We saw upside down, we saw spins. Um, whereas this, it seems like there's not too much excitement going on with the climb, but it'll, I think it will mean that they can showcase their best skills. Yeah, I mean, endurance is the key. After that jump, really, it's just relentless through. Goes all the way to the right and then all the way back towards the left, towards that final top hold and a jump at the top. And that is what the women have ahead of them. Those ghost holds, those ghost 360 holds at the bottom, dual texture and a bit of a tricky start. And that is our top nine. In the semi-final, she seems to have got a bit of skin back from that. So. And here we go, Miho Nanaka, first out. Serious look on her face. This is the moment for her. The audience stacked all the way up to the back of the arena. Miho is allowed about 40 seconds, if she wants it, to look at this route before that six minute clock you can see on the bottom right of your screen starts to tick down. If you're new to climbing, the rules for lead are pretty easy to understand. You start at the bottom, you finish at the top, and you have to clip the rope into all of the quick draws, which are the things hanging, dangling off the wall as you go in order. You can't skip them out, and you can't clip them out of sequence, and we're seeing her clip the first one right there. A bit of a nervy start. These dual texter holds, although the athletes can see, you have to be careful with your feet. You have to be really careful on these holds. There's parts of the hold that are slippery. So when we say dual texture, it means part of the hold has texture, part of it doesn't, which means if you step or pull on that part of the hold, you're going to slip straight off. We thought this move might be quite powerful. Miho, a very strong, powerful athlete, making light work of that. We should see her flick out, maybe slightly dynamic, but she could also bring her foot in here. She's opting to chalk up and have a little rest quite early on, which is interesting. Maybe feeling quite, her hands might be quite sweaty. There's going to be nerves going on. It's quite, it's tense in the arena right now. The crowd don't know what to expect of this route. When you're the first climber on the wall, you're kind of informing the crowd as well. So the crowd will build throughout this round, which is going to change how they react to what the climbers do. A really kind of 
a point that is often overlooked because the crowd have a big impact. Miho here on this section, she's doing a slightly different beat to what, to what was expected um, by the setters. I did think we would see them go left, right, left, right. They thought they might be bumping around. Sora Grimm is on her face there. She had to try like a weird compression squeeze. It's kind of the more unique bit of the climb before they get into the sustained, keep climbing, don't get pumped, go as quickly as you can through the moves. Yeah, it's like a giant fridge hug that. And now she's squatting down on those jibs and there's a jump to come. Fairly straightforward, especially for athletes of this caliber, but it is one of those moments you don't want to mess it up. So she's going to really be taking her time to sight it, hits the jug, and we'll probably have a moment to shake out with that heel in and make the clip as well. Not a difficult jump, but almost. That makes it even more nerve-wracking when you know that it's possible, you know you're going to be comfortable. Miho, a really strong boulder, very, very, very happy on a dyno, but not, maybe not as used to doing them on a lead rope. Um, she's clearly been making uh, big progress with her lead, coming off the back of a fifth place in Chamonix recently, so a final spot. Um, I think it's going to be really important for her that she's had that experience. This isn't her first finals, like you say. She looks comfortable on the wall. She doesn't look like she's faltering too much. She just needs to keep climbing through this next section and give it everything that she's got. Absolutely, and she's moving on now. Has that right heel locked in still, crosses through to the blocked sloper out to the yellow and some more compression style moves here quite physical yeah a definite change of pace from the start we kind of saw that compression climbing but in a very different way on the volume you are having to squeeze but you're pulling on holds whereas here you're squeezing between the holds having to kick the feet across there just as the setters were expecting crossing under this is a really physical part of the climb it is indeed so she gets set up once more grabs the rope to make that clip and her you see her right knee there it's pressed against the volume it's not quite a knee bar she definitely couldn't rest and take her hands off here but she can get a little bit back by aiding aiding some kind of weight loss like getting that really scummed in we call it a knee scum <laughs> yeah just pressing it in takes that pressure off the yeah. arms she had a bit of a moment with the clip got it rope sorted out though and you can see now about halfway ish on this route but not halfway in terms of climbing because it goes all the way to the right and all the way back left. So a long way to go and she falls. Her left foot slipped there, so she lost the left foot in the drop knee. As soon as that came off, it spat her off the wall. Wow, well, we're going to catch a replay of that, of course, in a moment. But Miho, a fairly early fall for her because you can see with the hand on the hips, she wasn't necessarily too pumped there. It was a mistake or a slip. We never know. I mean, that's our current high point. Let's find out in eight athletes' time, but we think it's a bit low for a podium place, that one. And that was the jump, as you said, quite straightforward for them, but you just want to make sure it's precise. Yeah, you're going to a good hold, though. I think any athlete we see get their hands to that hold. They're strong enough to hold onto it. Um, you can take a wild swing on that hold, and it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't matter too much. Absolutely. Well, Miho's comp is done. That's where she got to. And you can see here... All right, so Mia Krampel enters the stage through the arches. And she'll know it was a fairly early fall for Miho. That might start to play in her head because she's thinking, is it a tricky section down low? Did Miho make a mistake? Obviously, you won't be overanalyzing that, but it's something that might be going on. No, but she's definitely aware of it. She's been sat there waiting to come out. You can feel what's going on in the arena much much more than I think you would imagine. Um, the crowd give a lot away. And like you said the, previously, you can see quick draws swinging, so maybe she'll know how high she got. Um, but she definitely doesn't know the points. We saw earlier the points on the wall, so you could see how many points were awarded per hold, which is how it's scored. Each hold has a point value, and then you can get a plus on that if you make a convincing move towards the next hold. So I don't know if Miha will get a plus because she slipped before she was able to start the movement, but yeah, we'll see in the results shortly. Yeah, she's plus at the moment on the screen. You can see that graphic on the left, that shows the high point. Of course, things can be appealed and questioned, so those scores are provisional until they're confirmed. So imagine her foot slipped as she was in the movement, which would make sense as to why she got the plus. There we go. So Mia is underway. And we know there's a little bit now, this fridge huggy move, that black volume creating a 3D effect from the wall. It's crazy, that angle. She's on a real roof there. Yeah, speaking with the setters, this was the part they were most excited to see, to see how they would navigate around this big black volume. <laughs> it's awkward, they're having to be really wide, squeezing, toe hooking, heel hooking, compression, kind of 
quite unique. We haven't seen anything like this in this competition yet. The women's route in semi-finals had a lot of different styles, but no compression um, in this style. So yeah, good to see something different. Love the word navigate, and you are right. This is a huge object up there on the wall. She's got to come around, but she has successfully got through it. And now she will clip before the jump. That was important, something the setter said, like, yes, please, make sure they clip it. <laughs> and uh, then she will do the jump. Maybe take a little while to compose herself here. Yeah, you want to get it right, don't you? I mean, we've seen early falls on jumps that should be straightforward, so it's not 100%, but Mia, ah, easy for her. Yeah, she seemed to build her feet higher than Miho did, which made it way closer for her, because when she stepped up on her foot, she could almost reach it without her foot coming off her. So good work from Mia and a good opportunity to rest here on probably one of the biggest holds on the route. So she'll take her time, but it's quite low down. So you won't want to hang around for too long. Three minutes 50 on the clock on the right. You have to finish the route before that ticks down. Yeah, it can be really tempting to spend time on a good hold, especially when you know there's hard climbing to come, but she is on the clock. We can see the clock sticking down. She's got enough time, but she doesn't want to waste time low down resting, especially if she doesn't need to rest. So she has to make that decision on the wall. How long does she rest for on this good hold? Does she power through to the next bit? Um, and will there even be another rest? We don't know yet. Absolutely, yeah. We haven't seen too much of this so far. That big blue cross, by the way, on the wall, on that hold coming up, that's the last clipping point for a quick draw. Let's just uh, give the judges an idea. And Mia now hesitating a bit. Yeah, so she's nearing Miho's high point. You can see the footwork. She's having to really fight to get through this section. We were told that this kick out to this little screw on is quite difficult. Mia did not seem to struggle whatsoever. She's matching into the hold here. And then she's, I think, going to step back like uh, Miho did. Um, it is risky, though, because it could slip, but she's got her foot high on the jib, which will make a big difference. Yeah, she is safely through and moves into the lead provisionally at the moment. Left hand bumps up. She's on the yellow section. It's just below the head wall, about a meter, and you can see it there coming up, the metal coping on the wall. And it goes from 40 degrees to 15 degrees. So the athletes get a little bit of a respite on their arms, but the climbing tends to get harder, more technical up there. Yeah, definitely. It's more powerful for the midsection and then on the head wall, kind of more subtle movements, really terrible holds. It's hard to imagine how bad these holds are. Um, and especially after the climbers have done all the climbing to get up there. It looks like she's starting to tire a little bit, getting a lot less accurate, kind of puffing her cheeks a little bit but really rocking over on that heel and making the most of the heel. Great flexibility there. Yeah, nicely done by Mia, but she slips there with the right hand, waves goodbye. But new high point, 42, and a good climb for Mia Crample. And quite the mysteries of the isolation area. And Jesse Piltz comes onto the stage. Jesse is such an experienced athlete, a previous world champion, and she she loves being on that stage. And lead is her happy place. We saw her have a really good round in Boulder, I thought. She's been gone away and worked on her weaknesses in Boulder, and she came out flashing the final Boulder in semifinals, which was very dynamic, very wild. Um, she was really happy with that. She chatted about it on social media. It's good to see. So she's going to be wanting to come out here and show her best best self. Absolutely, and she is brilliant on a lead rope. She really came into form for that. Yeah, she's moved from that bouldering uh, side of things into the lead circuit and looking fit and strong. And a good start for those ghost holds. You can just about see these sections that are no texture, mainly because they, uh, they don't pick up chalk as much. They tend to stay yellower. Yeah, they're quite shiny, mm. so it's, you can kind of see them. But it is, it's hard to see how bad those holds are. They, they look quite positive as these athletes are moving through. And there are some little dimples, but they are not good holds. No, they are not. And generally, the friction on these things are far worse than what you get in a commercial gym. So if you listen to this and you're a climber and you think these holds are good, just trust us, they are not. And she's on this big black fridge hugging section now. 
I'm really enjoying this section, just like the Roots as I said. It's interesting to see how, how they're figuring out their own way through it. I don't think we've seen any of the girls doing the same sequence of hand movements, um, so they can make their own way through it. It doesn't look risky, it's just kind of zapping them and making them think, kind of throwing them off maybe, um, just ahead of that that big jump that's coming next as well. Yeah, it's a very good point. I mean, Jessie had toes there as she tried to pull through, and she's just struggling to get the body position. Now brings the right heel in, and rocking up on it. You can see she's squeezing with her thighs there. Every, every part of her body was in contact with that volume at that point. Yeah, she'll be glad of the rest here as she finally sits on top of it, squatting down in a frog style on her heels. She will just rest, lean back, and there is, just to let you know and keep you updated, there's an appeal on Miho Nanaka currently. So they're appealing that she shouldn't have got 32 plus, she should have just got 32. And that's something you said. So yeah, the judges, uh, the uh, coaches and judges are looking at that now. And really smooth for Jessie there. She, there was no doubt in her mind whether she was able to do that jump. She didn't even seem slightly nervous on it. She hit the hand placements perfectly, rode the swing just as you would want to. A great lesson in doing a dyno there from Jessie. Absolutely, yeah. When she's in her flow, it's uh, she's one of the world's best. Has that heel locked in? And it amazes me always when I watch that, how curved they have the foot. Yeah, we talk about flexibility a lot in climbing. And one thing that I think isn't mentioned very often is ankle flexibility. Um, and also hip, we talk about hip flexibility. But to be able to open your hips in a heel hook, just like Jessie is doing here, you see her pull right in, her toes pointing really far out. And now the ankle flexibility, her toes pointing really far down, that allows her to open her hips, push them into the wall, get her weight through her feet, take some weight off her hands, um, therefore making her more efficient. I am geeking out again. You're looking no, at look, me like I'm, I'm not at all. I'm, I'm honestly <laughs> loving your explanation. Shauna, if anyone who doesn't know, and everyone should, Shauna, uh, Olympian, world-class climber, multiple medals to your <laughs> name. She really knows what she's talking about. So trust me at home, listen to this lady speak because she's giving a master class here in the commentary box. And Jessie Pilts is uh, through the purples and into the yellow and black part of the route. Yeah, the athletes are the ones giving the master class. I just get to point out what they're <laughs> doing, which is a privilege to be here. So I'm really, really happy to be talking about it. Yeah, and Jesse is nearing the point where Miho slipped. Yeah, just remember that blue cloth cross. It's the last clipping point. That's what that indicates. You can see there, Jesse was kind of narrow, um, in a narrow compression on those two volumes. She looked like she was having to fight a little bit there. You know, it's got a lot more physical at that point. You start this route by climbing it's not not too much trickery and then you get into the compression section a few more moves just tick tacking around and then it gets way more physical here um, before you get into the head wall again where it's going to be kind of really sustained resistance climbing yeah we haven't seen many rests after that uh, that dyno and a jump it's just micro shakes on the way through up into that head wall and jesse now a big move up with the right and holds the swing kicking that right leg back to get back into the wall she is starting to look tired here, but one thing Jessie is really good at doing is keeping climbing through that pump. You can see her elbows are starting to lift. She's suddenly not looking as comfortable. That toe hook outright is really smart, though. Unfortunately, not working for her. Yeah, falling just below the uh, head wall there. She has a score of 38. Puts her in second place below Mia Crample and Miho Nanaka, whose score is under appeal, so that might change. And that's cool. And she enters, and someone who's just really come on in recent years, like whenever she walks into a stadium now, it looks like she belongs. There was a point where she was a little bit insecure, unsure of herself, and she just belongs on the biggest of stages. She sure does, and she is still only 19 years old, but she's very, very experienced. She's done so many World Cups. She's had a good year, I would say, maybe not as good as the previous year. Um, she's had some unfortunate results. I it's been a season where she's kind of been dealing with some adversity. She had an unfortunate mistake with a clip in two finals previous. And then last World Cup, she just fell on the crux move, something we're not used to seeing. Um, Cheyenne is an athlete that can definitely be up in that top that those top few. And I hope we get to see her give her all on this route. Absolutely. We're rooting for her. To let you know, Miho Nanaka's score has been downgraded to 32, so she loses the plus. I thought that might happen. Yeah, it was a good call. So she's through into the ghost holds now. 
Swings around, puts that right foot on the jib. And you can see the scoreboard starting to take place now. We haven't got all the names listed on the left, but you can have an idea of where they are. Cheyenne opting to miss the far right yellow volume there, going with her own method. Yeah, true, different from her. And that's not snow falling, that's chalk and dust in the lights there. It's quite atmospheric. Our cameramen are loving those shots. It did look like snow. <laughs> oh, now that's different. So she hit the side as an intermediate, then bumped into the right, and now she will get stood up underneath, cutting so loose. The root setters were expecting them to, where her left toe is now, take both hands and match um, as an undercut, and then you can roll to where her left hand is now. Uh, none of the athletes have done that yet. I feel like it's maybe not that obvious, but they're all making it work for them. The holds on this big black volume are relatively positive. They're not in cut. They're quite slopey, but they're, they're good holds and they're on a, a kind of flat surface. Uh, it's making them really work and get into the right body positions. It's really forcing them to be quite technical in their climbing through this section. All right, Sharon hits the uh, jump with ease, floats through that. Make sure the rope is in the right side for clipping. I think we saw a slight little smile there, maybe a smile with a relief getting that jump out of the way so she can get into this, get into the meat of the route now. Yeah, I think the athletes know what a jump like that means. It's just to unsettle them, but and we do see it happen. I mean, I said before, we see jumps being messed up like that. So We saw a lot of big mistakes happen in the semi-finals for many athletes. So, yeah, if you, if you need a reminder that those can happen, check out the semi-finals. <laughs> exactly. Just, just to... Uh, hype the nerves for you guys watching back at home. I don't want you to have too much of a good time here watching the bottom of this route. Cheyenne, Sweaty hands. Sorry, Cheyenne here, just, she was quite hesitant on the sequence. It looked like she wanted to cross to the second crimp and match. There wasn't enough space. The setters had blocked that in order to force this sequence. She came back down, made the bump again, and is now finding a bit of rhythm, it seems. But it did slow her down a little bit there. It did, didn't it? And she's now makes that clip and she begins this resistance section all the way to the right and all the way back to the left on the score of 27 aiming for 42 like i said earlier the atmosphere has changed in here suddenly the crowd they aren't cheering right now because they know that it's likely she will get through this section which is very different to the first athlete on the wall when they don't know what's coming often they'll cheer throughout so it's a different experience um all part of the sport so you can hear a couple of cheers, a couple of maybe the athletes cheering for her, but when it ramps up, when it gets to an important moment, the crowd will cheer and she will know that that move counts. So right now on the wall, she probably knows that these are moves that are possible, these are moves that aren't too hard, just keep climbing, keep going, because she'll be feeling the energy from the crowd, even if it's subconsciously. Yeah, it's a really good point that you can hear it. Now I'm listening for it as well. And the audience now starting to build. You can hear the claps coming as she approaches that head wall. The audience and the DJ doing a great job yes. of it as well. He is hyping the audience. He's starting the build up. All right, here she goes into the business end. Oh, that was a try hard face from her then. And you can see there's Jessie's score. There's Mia's score. So she's in the ballpark now. She looked to struggle with that move a little bit. It seems really powerful, quite far. But now she's able to rest and take a little moment to recover. Yeah, and when she does, it's very relaxed. She has that ability to, uh, to come back from pump. Shaking out those arms. Often you can see in an athlete's face where they're at pump-wise. So if they're grimacing when they're shaking, they aren't relaxed. They are struggling. They are having to fight. We saw that she was very relaxed in her face. She didn't seem to be struggling too much. And I think we'll see her definitely get a few more moves out of this. Oh, she's rocking up on that heel. Still looking confident as the three fingers on. And a bump out with that thumb pinching. Nearing the point, look, she is moving into, oh, she is now in first position, drawing a near crample, but due to count back, she will take the lead and out moves past that into 43. Climbing this sequence perfectly, just as the root set is intended, but an awkward clip here, having to reach all the way through off a terrible hold. You see her fingers, they're just on the volume, her thumbs on the thumb catch. She's gonna cross under to a second thumb catch, Opting to come back down, have a little shake, compose herself maybe. Yeah, she has had that moment. Now she needs to go left. She's made a slight tweak there. So instead of crossing under, she matched underneath with her right hand, which works so much better. Yeah, she works the feet over, crosses through, but falls on that cross move onto the purple jib. She comes down, setting the new score though, and moves into the number one spot. 
Yeah, just a few moves from the top, a really, really great climb. I hope she's happy with that. I hope she's coming down feeling tired. She seemed to start struggling in the midsection and then just kept it going. And we asked the setters, they said this is a resistance route. It's just nice. Well, let's look at our scores so far. She, Shianso moves into the lead with 47 plus. Mia Krampel 42, Jesse Piltz 39, and Miho Nanaka on 32. Laura Rogger, Molly Thompson-Smith, Britt Rabatou, Yanya Garnbrett, and I, Mori Takant. So here she is on stage from Italy, Laura Rogger, and there's another appeal come through. Jesse Piltz's score of 39, uh, sorry, 39. Yeah, so the Austrians are trying to upgrade her score to 39 plus. It would be really interesting to see if that appeal is upheld or not. She had a toe hook quite far to the right, which actually kind of st stopped her movement upwards into the progression of the hold. It did look convincing from the camera angle that we saw that she was going for it. Yes, I don't think she was going to hold on, but she definitely made a convincing effort towards it. So yeah, we'll see whether the appeal is upheld or not. There we go, we'll let you know when we know. Laura, underway. She prefers routes that are more endurance -y, so this kind of a, a route might suit her style. We do have quite a physical burly section in the middle, and she did have to jump there, which is a surprise. Um, Cheyun opting to miss out that big, that big jump to the right and go direct, which was interesting as well. But it doesn't seem to have flustered her in the slightest. I do think when she gets into a flow, into a rhythm, maybe she'll be a little bit nervous of the jump because that's not usually something she she enjoys. Um, but yeah, if we can see her on the head wall, I think we'll see a really great performance from Lara. Yeah, so she has a jump to get through in this section, which is thuggy. You can see how much she's working, cutting loose as well. It's a wide grip. You can see how wide it is. She's one of our shorter athletes. You can see just how wide it is there. Actually, if compression is wide enough, often it feels quite comfortable, um, but she, it doesn't look like a comfortable position. I don't think she's going to struggle to get up and over her foot here. And it is... It does seem like you can get something back in this position. You open your hips out, get really comfortable, and just have a little minute if you need it. She may take a rest, may kind of compose herself for this jump. We should see her take this, this, sec this next clip now too, as she does. Yeah, she has the jump to come now, and you're right. She will take a moment here. You can see her looking upwards. Made that clip before the jump, and now she's just eyeing it up. Long shake out. Make sure the rope's in the right place. Make sure your feet are set. Get ready. And here she goes. Pretty straightforward from Laura, that. And she looked happy with that. A, a sigh of relief almost on her face. A smile of relief, actually. Um, it definitely plays on your mind, you know, when there is a jump in the lead route and you know it's important to, to kind of get that right. You. Yes, it's not a difficult one. You could see that it's a good hole from the floor, but like I said earlier, that almost adds some pressure because it's unlikely any other athlete's going to drop it, so you don't want to be the one to do that. And, you know, these athletes, they look, they read this route before they come out, and they'll read it all the way to the top. They want to go all the way to that. They want to be getting on those moves because you get this one attempt, and then, yeah, it's gone forever. You don't get to try it again. Absolutely, you're right. It's that kind of a sport. And now from here on, really, Laura, it's in her comfort zone. So it's hers at the moment. She just needs to keep going and she will. She has this look on her face that makes it look like she's about to fall, but she just tends to keep pushing forwards. Yeah, I think she she maybe will find this middle section a little bit harder than the top section just because it's quite physical. It's quite like intense climbing. She looked like she wanted to clip there, decided against it. She does need to make this clip off the hold she's got now. You can see there's a blue cross. That blue cross indicates it's the last position she can clip from, so she cannot continue climbing until clipping. She just has, so now she can carry on. All right, so the clip is done, and you're right. Suddenly it looks like she's fighting a bit harder here, and did take a deep breath. Yeah, I thought maybe she would struggle with this middle section just because of how physical it is. She does before prefer the more sustained climbing, which is to come. But these moves are big. These holds are bad. There's an awkward foot move here. She looked like she was going to leave her feet to the left, but she's opted to move her feet to the right now, which is good. Yeah, she has the pinch in and precise with the feet still. But yes, yeah, starting to hesitate. High left foot makes that move easier. Bumps out to the right. And now she, that is a good example. And she always has this thing where she puts those laces around the shoe. And I always mean to ask her, and I never remember to. So bumping that left hand, adjusting on the crimps. And she tries to lock her heel, but she's struggling. This is a huge move for her. 
she's struggling, she was fighting. It looked like she kind of powered out, very similar to Jesse. Almost like they couldn't bend their arms, like their biceps just wouldn't work anymore. Now, an athlete who you are very familiar with, I've known for a long, long time, Molly Thompson-Smith comes out onto the mat. And you were saying she's having the competition of her life. What a boulder round she had the other day. Yeah, her best boulder performance that she's ever had at a senior event. And she considers herself a lead specialist. So to, to finish in the semi-finals, to get to the semi-finals in Boulder, what what an event for her. Uh, now to be climbing again here in the final. The crowd went wild for Molly, a crowd favorite. She is indeed a lovely, lovely human being as well. And she is underway. Nasty injury, as we mentioned. She's come back from that. So it's uh, a good sporting story coming back from adversity. And Molly more than capable of ending up on this podium. From reading this route, I thought Molly might quite like it. I thought that in the semi-finals too, and she really did showcase her best. She's seeming to be a little hesitant there. She didn't look like she was that comfortable. Maybe the nerves. She... This is a big competition, right? She's going to be feeling the environment. She's going to be feeling how tense it is. But I do think we'll see her get into her flow, get some rhythm, especially once this dino's out the way. Absolutely, and that's coming up in a minute. Jessie stays on 39, by the way, so that's not a plus for her. That appeal rejected. So this is the fridge hugging sequence, up with the right hand. For this sequence here, the more climbers that go on it, the more chalk that's going to build, especially because it's a black volume. So you see here she reached straight into the right hand. There wasn't much chalk on that originally, but the last few athletes have done that, so it now seems like the obvious method. I imagine we'll see all of the climbers do that from now on, just because there's so much chalk there now. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. I remember Adam Andre telling me that he looks for thumbprints on routes to find out how to hold the holds, and it's these little tips. But Molly, a huge swing sideways. Risky move from Molly there. She got very, very extended on her arms. Um, she's reaching to the, the small crimp. Actually, she climbed that the exact same way I read it. And then watching the previous climbers, I thought, oh, that's not right. But Molly made it work. I think it wasn't the most efficient method through this, this really awkward section. And she does seem a little flustered by it now. But she gets, a, there's a good position here. There's a time for composure, time for resting. And I think she's gonna need it right now. Yeah, I think she is, you're right. She just needs to settle herself down, calm that heart rate. She's made the clip and there we can see, she'll just shake head against the wall. She's got plenty of time so far, so she can take this moment. And deciding to rest before clipping that draw, puts the heel in. You can feel the tension at the moment in the stadium. It's it's quite unique. It's very different from Boulder yesterday. It is, and it's also different from when we were watching Laura climb and the, a few of the other climbers. Because she struggled through that section, the crowd have suddenly kind of held their breath through it, and they're all feeling this with Molly right now. They want to see her give her very best. They don't want to see mistakes. They don't want to see slips. They want to see people fighting right to the very end. So hopefully Molly feels recovered, feels composed now, and she can get really stuck into this burly section that's coming. Oh, she was quite low on that jump. That was a moment. That right hand right down to the bottom. She very nearly missed the good part of that hold, but she didn't. And she's still on the wall. She is still fighting. Her heel is up. She's going to have a little shake here, I think. And then, and then hopefully we see Molly find a rhythm. Opting to rest with a little bit of a Spider-Man pose here, I think. And <laughs> um, awesome. we saw her do that in semi-finals. There's a great shot from Lena Drapelli. If you go check that out on her Instagram, it's really cool. And I imagine another shot of Molly doing the exact same thing right now. She got a great smile in with the crowd there as well. And Hopefully that makes her remember where she is and appreciate this moment because yeah, she's going to get to get go fight for go fight for her spot as high up as you can in this final. Yeah, she sometimes writes little messages to herself on her shoes or her arms to remind herself just to relax and enjoy the moment. So that might have been one of those moments where she's looking back at the crowd, thinking, "Wow, I'm here." Yeah, here she's crossing over. We saw Cheyun try this as well. She tried to match it; it didn't work. Ideally, she needs to come back down and bump left hand again. Molly not climbing as comfortable as I would have liked to have seen. Molly, when she climbs well, she's fluid, she's smooth, she looks so incredibly strong. But this this isn't the most efficient climbing we've seen from Molly. Having to opt in to do a figure four there, um, putting a lot of weight through her right hand, which is gonna be tiring it out. This next section is a section that Molly would normally not struggle too much with, but I do think she's gonna be tired from not reading the route quite as well as she would have hoped yeah, I think you're completely right, and there we go, it's proven. She just burnt out, and that is disappointment from Molly. 
Although she'll take it as a learning experience and we'll keep an eye on that boulder and lead score as well. Hopefully see her climb again to the mat. I honestly don't know how you do this, Matt. I, my palms are sweating. <laughs> These are so, like, Brooke's one of, a really good friend of mine. I've known Molly for so many years. Oh, I feel so personally invested. I know Brooke's mum's in the crowd, and uh, yeah, I don't know how anyone watches their own child competing. Like, wow, this, this must be so intense. But everyone watching, just so everyone knows, watching climbing competitions is so much harder than competing in them. <laughs> <laughs> I just end up with no emotions at the end of it. Complete, <laughs> honestly, completely empty. It's, uh, it's hard. You can't watch this and be on the circuit and not just get so involved in these athletes. They give it everything. All right, Brooke, off the ground. She's underway. First clip in front of her face, gets that in. And here we go. This finals cracking through just uh, two athletes after Brooke to come so our podium starting to take shape soon. Brooke and the next two athletes both Yanya and I were all competing yesterday evening in Boulder finals and yesterday morning in Boulder semi-finals these athletes have been doing so much climbing or maybe not Yanya but <laughs> these athletes have been doing so much climbing it's worth remembering that not just the climbs that we see on stage they do their full warm-up routine before every round they are they are physically going to be tired. They train for this though. And I think Brooke, I do think she can really get stuck in with this route. She's so impressive at figuring out her own method. Rarely tends to get flustered, especially on a lead rope. I believe she prefers lead, although I don't think she's a specialist. She is a lead and boulder specialist, in my opinion. She's so such an impressive talent in many ways and still so young too. She is indeed. She'll be looking for that Olympic ticket, as is everyone. I'm going to keep on hyping it because I cannot wait. But she's got a job to do here, first of all. She went straight to the right, as you said, with all that chalk on the wall. It is the obvious way to go now. And there um, is her mum and coach there, or a coach there. Yeah, there's Robin. Yeah, she gets as involved. So, toes in. Brings the heel up to match where her hand is. Really smart climbing. You could see she never got too extended. She wasn't pushed for in her physical limits there. She's a shorter climber. She knew exactly what she was capable of using toe hooks and utilizing everything she can to kind of maneuver and navigate, like I said earlier, around this big black volume. Reaching back behind herself, bit awkward there, but she can now rest and reset. There's that left hand on the edge of the wall. See how open her hips are? She's so incredibly flexible, enabling, allowing her, enabling her to sit on that foot and be so very comfortable. All right, she's eyeing up the jump. Brooke going in the left hand, it looks, and then rethinking a little here. I think that angle correct. Goes left, right. Whew, that gave me a moment as well. She looked talking up on one hand. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> She does that a few times. She's got that casual hang. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like she's showboating and she is the last person I would expect to showboat. That was entirely instinctive. She was so comfortable on that hold. It just shows how strong these athletes are that that is an efficient re resting position, a chalking position for them. Madness, isn't it? Look at those t uh, footwork as well. The left foot doing as much work as the right. Three fingers makes the match and that is awkward. As you know, it is blocked. I'm surprised with Brooke there that she opted for that method, but she knew that it would work. I've seen Brooke match some of the tiniest holds I've ever seen outdoors and indoors. So yeah, I'm not surprised she made it work, but I thought she would do the bump again. Yeah, so she got the match in. Now into these blocked holds, and now she's unleashed a bit of power on these moves. Tries to get a heel toe cam locked in as she drops heel, knees down. Yeah, toe cam dropped. Sorry, knees. toe cam, yeah. Yeah, that was really really smart from her to do that she's a climber that likes to use her whole body we often don't see brooke trying to do something in the kind of showboaty hard physical way she'll use her heels she'll use her toes she'll make the most out of what she's got to offer she's a really instinctive climber using her body so so efficiently and so well and also when she gets to the point where she needs to try hard she can unlock something special when she's giving her best self absolutely well, this is near where Laura fell. Brooks in sixth position at the moment. A long clip, deciding to opt to go as Laura did maybe to the next one. Oh, no, she's reset and got it. And we can see now the stacked names on the right. Mia Crample's high point on 42 is looking pretty good at the moment. 
It is, and the, Mia coming out really early, it almost looked like the route maybe was too easy, but now we've seen athletes struggle through this midsection, showing me, show, just showing how much Mia kind of gave to this climb and how well she performed through it. She seemed to find a great flow, something that Brooke really likes to do. She likes to be climbing in that flow state. It seems like this climb almost doesn't allow for that to happen very easily which I'm surprised at. I thought we would see more flow through this section, but it seems to be getting, they're hard moves. It, it, it's not, there's no point at which it's a given. Yeah, they're quite a choppy sequences as well, sort of change from crimps to power. And then she's now really fighting, eyes up the next hold, jumps almost above, yeah, above Lauda's score. Has a look at the clock, and she's only got a minute left. That went quick. It went really quick, and I think she almost seemed quite surprised with that too. It just shows that these, these moves have been testing her. She's been having to fight harder than I think she wanted to in order to get to this head wall. She looked tired there. She looked pretty zapped. Again, I think she was powered out. I thought this would be more sustained and endurance-based route, but we're seeing the athletes really have to give a lot of power, lots of biceps. <laughs> um, yeah best self you know we we see her kind of hit this flow state that is really beautiful and incredible to watch it was a little bit jerky throughout that and I think the route has really forced the athletes to kind of get out of their comfort zone and not really find find a flow so yeah a lady that doesn't tend to struggle with finding flow is this lady right here so I am so excited to watch Yanya as always, but especially on this route. And I feel like she'll know that this route hasn't been topped yet. She'll be feeling it from the crowd. And she's going to be looking to add it to her gold medal list from World Championships. Well, exactly. I mean, she's already got one this week, and she will be uh, with her eighth World Championship gold if she gets it tonight is a massive statistic for her. It is at only 24 years old, no. considering the World Championships tend to be every other year. She's, she's not actually competed at that many. Well, and the last time she did, she won the double. 2019, she got it in Boulder and Leeds. Yeah, so, uh, I was there alongside her. Yeah. I, I watched her. I competed with her <laughs> in all of the rounds, nearly. So she could get the double-double, having missed the, uh, the one in between 2019 and now. Yeah, she took uh, the World Championships off after winning gold at the Olympics, so I guess we can forgive her for that. Just about, I think. So, Yanya is underway. Not climbing last, as she uh, tends to. Aymori is after that. Yanya seeming a little uncomfortable here, like she didn't quite know what she wanted to do. She looked like she wanted to go into the undercut, kind of did a little hand swap. It didn't seem to fluster her, but almost surprising that she wasn't as confident in the sequence that she'd read and intended. Um, in the semi-finals, we saw Yanya struggle, something we're not very familiar with seeing. She... Well, she's slipping here, isn't she? That yeah, right foot. Yeah, I held my breath there. I just wanted to give a minute to see what was coming. A very risky move from Yanya. Really solid in the toe hook, but... Yeah, I mean, you talked to her in that athlete lounge and we were just watching it. I think both me and Sean are pausing here because this is unusual to see Yanya struggle this hard this early. It really is. Yeah, she she definitely made me pause for a second there. I want to let Yanya's climbing speak for itself and don't want to speak over any of the action that's <laughs> going on. Normally we can chat away while Yanya's at the bottom of a climb. She usually cruises through it and that was unusual to see her kind of not looking as smooth as we would imagine. Um, I guess a little similar to Brooke in a way. Yeah, you're very right. Well, she makes the jump, and now this is her opportunity just to settle things down a little here. And you can see how comfortable she looks there. She's got both feet on. She's taken the clip, her arms nice and straight. She's given a little breath, though. She just needs to recover and let that bottom section go. Her focus needs to entirely be on this next section that's to come. We're so used to seeing Yanya dominate, but it is good to see this kind of a fight from her. This is one of the most exciting last couple of climbs I think I've seen in a long time. Gets that foot a little caught up, hand in an awkward position, but now adjusts. She's going to go for the match, possibly, unless she drops back down and changes it. Yeah, she is going to... Yes, I thought that might happen. There she's going to really rock over on that foot, open the hips out, sit on that heel, went right hand again. Smart way to do it, very efficient. She seems to maybe have found her flow now. And you can see those Olympic rings caught on camera. The Olympic champion. 
heel locked in, nice and calm. Look at the time though, two minutes 50 on the clock. Unusual for Yanya to have to climb this slow. Really great work from the route setters, challenging these athletes and slowing them down because we, we want to see them fighting up on that head wall. We don't want time to become a factor, but it potentially is. Yanya needs to kind of get a move on and get climbing so she can really start to fight on that head wall. We saw her, we did see her struggle in semi-finals. She had to fight really, really, really hard to try and get a clip in, wasn't able to make that and ultimately timed out. So a position that I haven't seen Yanya in for a very long time timing out. These routes are much different to what we've seen on the circuit this year, it feels like. Maybe you can speak for that better of having been there. But yeah, great to see Yanya being challenged. I know, I'm enjoying this and I hope you are at home watching too. Two minutes on the clock now. This is a, a new experience for us. Yanya in real determination mode. Very risky climbing from her. She's able to make it work because she is so strong, but very rare to see. Wow, this is fascinating stuff here. Those are the rings I talked about before. She's standing on that small jib. And quite a way beneath the head wall. Minute 39, and you look at that distance to go, and it's a long way. And she's got some big moves. She checks the clock once again. She's currently on 37. Chayun's high point is 47 plus. She's got a lot of climbing to catch Chayun's high point right now. All right, Yanya needs to unleash something here. Brings the right foot through. There is the head wall. Change in angle coming up. Gets the heel in. And suddenly looking more comfortable, looking in a position where she, she feels happy. It's like she suddenly found her rhythm maybe, but she does need to keep getting a move on. The crowd are building. It's getting tense and intense in here. It is indeed. She's got that left knee slightly dropped down. Now upgrades it. Bumps over to the left, and from now on, it's just left. Makes the mat, goes high up with the left. Yeah, you're right, she is suddenly hit another gear, perhaps, 40 seconds. She knows she needed to as well. She's looked down at that clock, and it's like it's shifted into a different mode of Yanya. She's got 30 seconds left. She does have enough time to top this route, but she's not got much time to rest. She needs to keep moving. Come on, Yanya. This, if she manages it, is a heck of a comeback after that start. 22 seconds, brings the right foot up, big drop knee, and she'll sit for a sec to shake. She has got time here, not a lot of it, but she can have a micro shake. She's in the high point right now, but there is one climber left to go. All right, we'll want to top this out to make things sure. Hits the top quickly, six seconds, she makes the clip, she does top it out. Boy, did Yanya give us a moment then. Oh, well, she's done everything she can do, and that really was something unique to see Yanya fight that hard. And as you said, suddenly it was like a switch went when she looked down. Yeah, yesterday interviewing her, she said she wants to give her best Yanya. When she does that, she knows she's not going to fall off. It looked like that wasn't the best Yanya, but it did not matter. She's got to that top anyway, with just a few seconds on the clock, making that clip. What a moment. She's taken it all in. Only one lady can knock her off that top spot, and we get to witness it right now. Well, here she is. We talked about her a lot in the last couple of days. I Mori is out and immediately air climbing the second she hit that stage. I never seems to be flustered. She's always so composed, her face so relaxed. I would love to know what's going on in her head right now. She's got to be feeling some of this pressure. Look at that shot as well. I mean, that's the backdrop to her. It's intense, all of those eyes on you, all the spotlights. It is, but suddenly I think when she hits that first hold, it'll all fade away. She'll be absorbed in the climbing and what she has to do on the task at hand. But we need to remember, I knows now, I think she knows, if she tops this route, she is the world champion. On countback, she will beat Yanya Garnbrot. So it's hers for the taking. It is indeed. Ah, I've just had this moment. Our sport is so special, isn't it? Well, our final climber out for the women. I'm Ori from Japan. Let's see what she can do. Interestingly, Ai Mori is often a slower pace climber than Yanya. We just saw Yanya get to the top with just a few seconds on the clock. So potentially we could see Ai time out. She, I, I think she'll know that Yanya took that long because she's been sat there waiting to come out and climb. She'll have had her shoes on. She'll have been ready to go much earlier than she expected. Yanya often not taking the entire six minutes to climb. So she'll definitely be aware of that and i think we can see that in her pace right here she's climbing a bit feistier than i normally or we normally see her climbing uh, which is good to see yeah, it's a very very good point that yeah 
I mean, we saw her being timed out in the semi-final run. So, yeah, it needs to get this timing correct. My eyes are locked on that clock now. You've said that. I'm really counting it down. What can I, Mori, do here? She bumps the hands. This wide compression move. Out onto the jib with the right hand. Our earlier climbers seem to make quite light work of this section. They seem much more comfortable. I wonder if that's the pressure. Also, the crowd are really quiet. Earlier on, they were cheering them through every section. Like I said, the crowd have so much knowledge of this route. The crowd have way more knowledge than the climbers because they've seen now eight climbers climbing and they know when to cheer. They know when the tense moments are. Suddenly, when the crowd aren't cheering and you're finding it hard, it's a bit of a confusing position to be in because you're like, okay, no one else found this bit hard. Why am I? I'm not normally a big fan of dinos, but making light work of that one there. Yeah, she didn't hang around, did she? Had a little look at it and then went, and now she will rest. We did see other climbers take a moment to compose themselves. I did not need that. She does not indeed. All right, well, clips the high drop, makes the match, and here she will rest, which is good because there aren't many opportunities after this. A physical section to come through those yellow and black holds. A very short rest, though, and then she's opting for the match on this hold. Not. Not a surprise for I. She loves a match on a tiny hold and often makes it work. All right, up to the blocked sloper with the right hand. Brings the left hand through. And this is where things start to get physical. Bumps up, looking towards the next jib. High above her head, a bit blind. She missed it there and now bumped into it, adjusting on that hold as she went. Impressive that she's held that, missing the jib. That black hold is really slopey. So really good that she was able to stay calm and composed there, adjust and hit the jib. Cuts loose, swings the legs round. Again, eyes a climber that tends to make the most of what she's got on the wall, using her feet, using her body, really smart, but also a climber that's physically capable of doing those powerful moves when she needs to. Yeah, absolutely, and she is showing that right now. Has that last, that blue cross hold. And we have seen I beat Yanya previously, you know, at her home World Cup last season. I took the gold spot and Yanya came second. Not a familiar feeling for Yanya, I'm sure. So she, but Yanya has now done everything that she can. She's taken the top on this, on this route. She couldn't have done any more. It's all up to what I does now. The, it's out of her control. She just has to sit in that hot seat and watch. Oh. I with a massive drop knee down to the ground, hits the left hand and then bumps out with the right. Two minutes on the clock, it is good timing that at the moment. So, the last part of the wall coming up here. There's the left hand on the jib on the black volume. And that was the power move that Laura made look hard. I cruising through that. She's looking really solid, but she isn't going to be able to take much rest. So she's going to need to keep climbing, get a good rhythm. It's sustained, it's hard. There's no point at which this climb gets easy. She needs to keep, 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 keep going. Absolutely. This is I Mori's moment here, and the crowd cheering every single move she makes now. Bumps up with the right. Look at the scoreboard. She moves up to just under a podium position. And there is Yanya staring upwards, calm and collected. Reaches out left, and we're into headwall territory with a minute and a half, or oh, less than a minute and a half on the clock. Hits the first jib with that tick mark. Needs to watch the rope, careful not to stand on it. She's been really precise with her foot placement too. Yeah, she has to be, gets that pinch in. And she's really solid through the hand. You're not seeing her flail. She's not fighting today on the wall yet. She does look composed. I think we'll see her get potentially to the last move and then it's going to be exciting from there. Absolutely. All I need to do is finish this route. I say all. It's a huge task still to go. Hard moves, but she's got lots of time to do it. She does have a lot of time. She's really, really stepped up the pace. Great to see from her. It is. Well, she's one move away now from a World Championship gold. Can she push Yanya out? Deny her the double. Chalking up before the last move. Really impressive that she's able to even hold that position. Here we go. She latches it. If she clips this chain, she will be world champion. And she is. Ai Mori takes the gold here in Bern. Japanese coaches and the audience goes crazy. What performance, Shauna. What a performance. So impressive that she was able to keep her composure. She knew how much that climb meant. She knew she needed to stop it to win. The pressure was on and... Yeah, she, she kept it together. Really, really impressive climbing from her. Well, confirmation then. Aymori takes the gold, pushes Yanya down into silver. 
Jansso third, and those three names, I mean, that's kind of the who's who of lead climbing at the moment. And Yanya as well is there to celebrate with the podium finishes. That was the jump over to the left. It just goes to show how important that semi-final round was as well. The route setters separating the field in the semi-finals round um, for the, the top athletes. And that the fact that the two athletes finished the route today, maybe it doesn't show that they got to fight here, but they did in the semi-finals. They were split and yeah, a really great show from the, all of the athletes on a route that just didn't let them get comfortable, didn't let them find the flow. So. Hats off to them all. Indeed. Well, the men is to come, but first of all, we'll have the flower ceremony and then I. Shanso takes bronze. Medal around her neck. Next up, Yanni Gambra. Well, we used to see her winning. I'm already did one better here this evening. Yanya, silver medal to Atua, gold from Boulder, and clearly by the smile on her face. I don't think she minds too much from that one. She'll climb again for the Boulder and lead and trying to get that Olympic place. Finally, Aimori is announced. She will stand up tall. She's won World Cups before. She's now a world champion. Old. A moment she will remember for a long time. And the Yanya Ai battle goes on. Those three women, I tell you, they are some of the world's best, especially in terms of lead. Well, they are the world's best, literally. Yanya already getting gold. Six 